Hi, I'm Mickey Delmage of Shored Park, Alberta. Hear the latest information from the world of radio, locally and internationally, each week on the International Radio Report on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal and online at ckut.ca. Welcome, everybody, to the International Radio Report for Sunday, September the 3rd, 2023, here on CKUT Radio 90.3 FM in Montreal and around the world on the Internet. My name's Sheldon. My co-host is Jill. We're here every week with 30 minutes of news and information from the world of radio, broadcasting, amateur radio, and anything else that falls into the radio category. We thank you for tuning in. You can reach us by email radio report at yahoo.com we're live streaming and archived at ckut.ca our facebook group international radio report you're welcome to join the group we have 935 members currently our youtube channel at irr has 866 subscribers you can find the latest edition of the program there plus past editions of the show for you to listen to as well we invite you to subscribe to the youtube channel and our x account formerly twitter is available to you i r r c k u t is how to find us there we invite you to uh, follow us on x as well So we have a lot of stories to get to this week. We'll get things rolling right away. And uh, if you out there are interested in a career in radio, you better pay attention to this story. The headline comes uh, from um, CTV News in Ottawa, and we have an audio clip. It's about a radio station that is in the Ottawa Valley that is desperately looking for volunteers so that they can stay on the air. So uh, let's listen to this report from CTV News, and uh, we'll talk about it uh, after the report. A volunteer-run radio station deep in the heart of the Ottawa Valley is at risk of shutting down. After 25 years in Killaloo, more manpower is needed to keep the locally focused FM station on the air. Here's CTV's Dylan Dyson. This is the sound of 102.9 FM, Canadian homegrown community radio, or CHCR, in Killaloo. But soon that frequency could go quiet. We're struggling to find board members that are are really dedicated to keeping this place going. After 25 years broadcasting in the Killaloo area, the volunteer-run radio station is in desperate need of more help after three of its dedicated team members recently passed away. It would be really nice to get some more people doing like really good music shows. Currently cataloged music from artists in the Ottawa Valley to international genres is played at random by a computer program and weekly talk shows are becoming more sparse. It's important I think for any community to have a community radio station um, in the event of emergencies to promote local artists and local music events, things like that. It's getting that that spirit, that um, energy, and that interest, you know, for someone who really loves radio. CHCR says ideally they'd need 10 more people to fill a variety of roles from social media to marketing, administrative, and even on-air talent. Again, these are volunteer positions, but no experience is required. They can be Ottawa people, they can be Renfrew. Pembroke, anywhere. The station says volunteer interest over the next two months will be crucial in determining what, if anything, goes over the airwaves next. This is an underused tool in the community, and we really should open the doors and get more people involved. Anything to do with volunteering, we'd be really appreciative. Dylan Dyson, CTV News, Killaloo. You know, if you have an idea of a show... uh something that you think would be useful on the air. Maybe even you live in that community area and you think that maybe there's some programming that would be very useful to everybody out there. 
Yeah, it's it, it really shows the importance of these small community-based radio stations. They're going to be putting out information for the people in that area that nobody else probably is putting out. You can hear the passion for this station and the desire to keep it going in the voices of the people being interviewed. And no experience necessary, as it was no. said in the report. So uh, we'll put a link up to this story. Uh, you can get in touch with them in particular if you're in that uh, area and would like to help them out. Um, right now, as it says, the computer is playing the music on the station and they really want to get some some real people on there, which is a good thing as well. In our next story, we have the FCC that grants amateur baud rate waiver with Hurricane in mind. This is via the ARRL and Radio World. The FCC issued a 60-day waiver to allow amateur radio data transmissions at a higher baud rate than normally allowed to help with relief for areas affected by Hurricane Idalia. The Mobility Division of the Commission's Wireless Telecommunications Bureau granted the request, which had been submitted by the American Radio Relay League. ARRL seeks this waiver for those licensed radio amateurs who are directly involved with amateur radio emergency services and other communication support groups working with federal, state, and local emergency management officials. ARRL states that Section 97.307F of the Commission's rules prevents the use of certain protocols capable of higher data rate emissions in the high-frequency bands, and many amateur stations active in the emergency communications preparedness are capable of using. They also point out that the past FCC temporary weaver have allowed such protocols in similar events, including Hurricanes Maria, Dorian, Laura, Ida and Ian, typhoon relief communications in Hawaii and wildfires in western areas of the country. Background section 97307F currently limits the baud rate of high-frequency amateur radio teletype, RTTY, data transmissions as follows. 300 baud's for frequency below 28 megahertz, except the 60-meter band, and 1,200 baud's in the 10-meter amateur band. So this is nice, um, allowing more baud rate or more bandwidth sometimes, because it often goes together, uh, will, of course, uh, increase the amount of data and probably information that can be sent in and out of emergency areas. So I think this is a pretty good idea. Now you were doing some monitoring with respect to uh, the hurricane in the southeast uh, this week. Uh, Hurricane WatchNet was active and a bunch of other radio stations doing a lot of emergency updates and information, weather, traffic, etc. Anything really stand out? The interesting part of, of monitoring the Hurricane WatchNet is uh, it's almost almost like being there. Interesting to, to hear how it works and all the help also that, that goes around it. And there were a lot of stations checking in. I was not alone. When I posted all the frequencies, um, a bunch of us were listening. And uh, it was very, very active. I just left the radio on and was doing other things while listening in. Uh, always very interesting to uh, monitor these. Yeah, a number of radio stations as well. One of that we had monitored in the past with hurricanes, WFLA down in Florida. Uh, they were active again with uh, full coverage and taking phone calls from people and what have you. Again, you know, when when internet is out, power is out. I was watching a brief coverage of the uh, of a TV station in Florida as well that was doing wall to wall coverage. But at one point, the announcer even said. You know, if you have power and you're able to see this on a TV screen, <laughs> you know, he, he kind of realized yeah. like, oh, we're putting this out on television. How many people are actually going to be able to see it? So keep a radio on standby for sure when things like this happen. And uh, good that some of the radio stations were going into full coverage uh, once again when something like this happens. We have a little bit more news on the um, the movement to uh, retain AM radio services. The National Association of Broadcasters is highlighting the importance of AM radio with a bunch of new audio clips that stations anywhere can pick up and, and use. The NAB has produced a series of six new broadcast-ready spots, three in English and three in Spanish, that can be used by radio stations to promote the importance of retaining AM radio service in the United States. So we're going to let you listen to the three English ones that they've produced, and uh, you may start hearing some of these on your local radio stations. 
More than 80 million Americans depend on AM radio each month for news, weather, and emergency information. A new bill in Congress would make sure AM radio remains in cars. Because when cell and internet services are down, this free service could be your only lifeline. Text AM to 52886 and tell Congress to support the AM Radio for Every Vehicle Act. Message and data rates may apply. You may receive up to four messages a month, and you may text STOP to STOP. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. For over a century, AM Radio has evolved to meet the needs of our community. More than 80 million listeners depend on AM Radio each month. It's also the backbone of the emergency alert system, keeping us safe in dangerous times. A new bill in Congress would ensure this free, reliable service remains in cars. Text AM to 52886 and tell Congress to support the AM Radio for Every Vehicle Act. Message and data rates may apply. You may receive up to four messages a month, and you may text STOP to STOP. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. AM Radio provides always-on news, sports, talk, traffic, and weather reports. It also delivers vital emergency information when your community needs it most. A new bill in Congress would ensure AM Radio stays in your car. Because when cell and internet services are down, this free emergency service is critical. Text AM to 52886 and tell Congress to support the AM Radio for Every Vehicle Act. Message and data rates may apply. You may receive up to four messages a month, and you may text STOP to STOP. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. So nice uh, little uh, ads there that uh, kind of define what AM radio is all about and how we can help. And of course, don't forget to text Congress. Yep, and uh, let them know that you're in support. Uh, There was one piece of information I just saw this morning. Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota, she's one of the supporters, the senators behind the bill. Uh, She spoke out uh, this week in Minnesota, emphasizing AM's critical role in public safety and communications information. So uh, she is out there uh, pushing uh, forward the the bill as well. Uh, So there's a lot of of activity going on. I'm sure Congress has been bombarded uh, by a lot of people and a lot of groups. And what better timing as we are in hurricane season and tornadoes popping up and that sort of thing to, uh, to show the importance of it. So we have Guard Brooks that launches a sports-themed tailgate radio station. This is by Lori Liebig, American Songwriter Magazine. Guard Brooks is expanding his recently launched Sevens Radio Network just in time for football season. On August 29th, the country hitmaker unveiled his new tailgate radio station during a special event in Kansas City, Missouri. Available now to tune in subscribers The station will offer a high-energy mix of music curated to accompany any sports-related festivities. Exclusive programming available to Tailgate radio listeners includes the weekly countdown, Tailgate Top 20 with Maria, and segment called Tailgate Takeover that features an array of guest hosts and their favorite songs. This is one of those ideas someone says, why didn't we do this a long time ago? This combines everyone's passion for sports and music it also allows you to enjoy your tailgate barbecue or poolside party without doing the work there's so much music on this channel tailgate radio will be everyone's favorite longtime television host and producer maria taylor serves as host to the station continuing a long-standing creative partnership with brooks working closely with garth and his foundation and we created the power program which mentors middle school girls has been nothing short of amazing, adds Taylor. And now we are embarking on Gart's extraordinary vision to connect sports and music fans with Telgate. It's such an honor to be chosen by greatness to be partner in the radio space. In June, Brooks debuted his partnership with Intune with the Big 615, a unique country radio station that can be streamed in more than 100 countries. By choosing a streaming platform rather than a terrestrial broadcast station, Brooks can offer a mix of classic hits, deep cuts, and tracks from rising artists more easily. Fans can find more information on Tailgate Radio by visiting TuneIn.com. And uh, yeah, why not? You know, uh, music for the sports. Hey, if you're doing a party and uh, want to uh, have fun, 
uh, yeah, it, I, guess, I guess it takes away some of the, uh, you know, having to take dig the records out and, and or <laughs> do some mix some, of some sort. I've been to a couple NFL football games in the U.S. and I saw these tailgate parties that go on. Like, they're out there all day. They show up at, you know, a game starts at 1 o'clock. They're out there at 10 o'clock in the morning setting up their barbecues and what have you and getting everything ready. Then they go in and watch the game. And then they come out and it takes like three hours to get out of the parking lot. So they say they stay in the parking lot and they have TV sets set up and music and whatever. And they watch the four o'clock games in the parking lot because it takes so long to get out of the parking lot. So they, it's an all day affair. So if uh, they're hooked up here with uh, getting into Garth Brooks radio station, it's going to be a perfect uh, background for the parties that go on. What's happening with our son? Well, our son is um, somewhat active. There's a couple of uh, coronal mass ejections that are on the way. And today, September the uh, 3rd, there could be a um, geomagnetic storm caused by these. The uh, CMEs are not that powerful, but because there's two of them uh, back to back, that might actually spark G1 or G2 class geomagnetic storms. So we're going to see if conditions don't seem to be as good today as they are usually. During the week, uh, conditions should stay rather quiet as we have uh, more quiet conditions. Uh, sunspot number of 77 and a solar flux of 140. And uh, in between any other um, unforeseen events, uh, things should be quiet for the week in general. And good conditions, especially in September, we're getting into this unique time in propagation, which is very, very interesting to listen to. So um, one of the ways that you can actually witness all of this, well, is really to turn on a radio and listen. I'm Skip Airy, N2EI of Southern New Jersey. If you're interested in radio, AM, FM, shortwave, amateur radio, pirate broadcasting, and more, you won't want to miss the International Radio Report every Sunday morning at 10.30 on CKUT. 90.3 FM in Montreal, and online at ckut.ca. A subject that's coming up everywhere these days in all different fields and lots of pros and cons about it is artificial intelligence. And there is definite radio connection to artificial intelligence. People started talking about what might happen with it. Well, now we're starting to see some things happening with it. The story from Paul McLean in Radio World. Artificial intelligence goes on the air on DAB Plus in Germany. Artificial intelligence is now being used to program and voice a DAB Plus channel in Germany. As far as Radio World is aware, this is the first over-the-air radio broadcast station in the world to be programmed and voiced full-time with artificial intelligence. And 10 Deutschland has put its absolute radio AI format on the air on a local DAB multiplex in the area of north central Germany between the cities of Hanover and Magdeburg. The AI format, which uses technology from Radio Cloud with Anten Deutschland, launched earlier this year in an online streamed version featuring a synthetic voice called KAI, or K, using parameters set up in advance by the broadcaster. The AI creates a schedule, programs the breaks, and voices all of the on air elements. The city of Hanover is called the place in Germany where the clearest German is spoken, said Managing Director Mirko Drenger. So it's fun that we start with an AI host there. DAB Plus is very successful in Germany, and we're waiting for an opportunity to put it on a nationwide broadcast slot. There are two platforms for National DAB Plus in Germany, each with 16 stations. And 10 Deutschland runs one of the two platforms and six of those stations. And it also has many online audio streams. You comfortable with this or not? I got a hard time mostly because what we've heard about AI and how it's difficult to know what's AI driven and what's a real human behind a microphone. I got no problem that we could try it and do it as long as it's extremely clear that we know and it's advertised as AI. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, I've heard examples of it and how they're able to create different voices and, you know, the scary parts of it, they're using real people and altering, you know, taking their voices and creating them saying things that people didn't actually say. And, you know, there's all kinds of weird stuff going on with it as well. So that's what's scaring a lot of people about it. Um, you know, I can understand radio stations, uh, just imagine a fully AI radio station is not going to have a lot of staff, not going to have a lot of expenses. Uh, they're basically going to flip the switch and away it goes and they really don't have a lot of overhead involved. So, uh, you know, that's going to intrigue and, and attract a lot of attention, I think, uh, from radio station owners. So I guess people will be monitoring this closely to see how well it goes over. I know a lot of people in general, you know, like to have real people to talk to on the radio sometimes, call in and have somebody act actually answer a phone or respond to a text or what have you. Uh, who knows? Maybe they'll have the AI doing that as well. You know, the, the possibilities yeah. are kind of endless. Uh, so anyways, we'll see how uh, I think we'll have a lot more stories about this, uh, you know, coming in the future. So uh, it seems that every week something's happening in uh, Africa. Um, French media hit by Gabon ban amid contested election. This is from Agence France Presse via Mike Cooper and Glenn Hauser's World Radio. French media outlets RFI and France 24 have expressed incomprehension at the suspension of their operations in Gabon at the end of a fraught presidential election. The government cut off the internet on Saturday evening and put a curfew in place, citing the risk of violence as voting drew to a close in the race between incumbent Ali Bongo Ondimba and his main opponent, Albert Ondo Osa. The Communication Authority announced the provisional ban on the broadcasting in Gabon of France 24, Radio France International, and TV5 Monde. It accused them of a lack of objectivity and balance in connection with the current general elections. In a statement on Sunday, France Media's Monde, the parent company of RFI and France 24, said it regrets and is surprised by this provisional suspension, which lacks foundation, adding that it deprives the Gabonese of two of these main sources of reliable and independent information. The elections in Gabon, presidential, legislative, and municipal have gone ahead without the presence of election observers. Paris-based media rights campaigners, Reporters Without Borders, denounced the fact that foreign journalists had been largely restricted from covering the election. So yeah, you know what? If you don't want to have people see exactly how things are happening... Well, just make sure that the press isn't there and, uh, hey, cut off the internet and make sure that nobody else can talk about it. Yeah, since this story was released, of course, the election w did go ahead. Uh, the uh, sitting president was reelected, but a bunch of the military got together, moved in and put him under house arrest. And uh, basically, all hell broke loose. Yep. And uh, so now we have another country in Africa that's uh, in a bit of upheaval and uh, people having difficulty trying to get information as to exactly what's going on. Yep, definitely. And uh, that just makes me um, happy that, you know, Radio France still has shortwave outlets through. For Africa, yeah, they'd be getting uh, a few, quite a few services that still exist for Africa. Uh, Voice of America, for example, yeah. uh, we hear their broadcasts quite regularly into uh, Africa in our late afternoons, the evening broadcasts in West Africa. So uh, there are sources uh, for uh, reliable news for people to tune into with the right equipment, of course. And yes, it's starting even earlier this year, folks. Uh, we always have these stories coming up. Usually it's been a little bit later than this, but this is the kicker story for this week. It comes from the Complete Music Update, which is actually a really interesting website. I'd never seen it before. Uh, Complete Music Update by Chris Cook. UK radio station in Exeter launches, are you ready for it? Christmas song service. Yes, in August. Happy Christmas, everybody. Given you're all busy getting back into the festive mood once again, you're all doing that, right? Uh, I'm not. <laughs> Exeter-based radio station Radio 
EXE, or Radio X, has launched a new service on the city's DAB digital radio network, playing back-to-back Christmas songs from now until January. It's August, and I just tuned in to hear Shaken Stevens singing Merry Christmas, everyone. If that wasn't bad enough, they have even changed the name of the service to Radio EXEMIS, or Xmas. Commenting, Radio EXE President Matt Rogers told Radio Today, Whilst I simply love to play non-stop Christmas songs on Radio X, Mr. Scrooge, who runs the radio station, has not allowed that. Radio Xmas is the solution, though, so whenever you fancy a festive fix, select it on your digital radio. However, don't be thinking Radio Xmas is the only back-to-back Christmas songs radio station on offer right now. Global's Heart Xmas never turned off its online feed from last December. Did they forget, or (laughs) is it on purpose? I don't know. <laughs> Pretty weird. Anyway, yeah. so uh, if you want it, you can go find it. Um, it's uh, out there. Uh, look for Radio E-X-E-M-A-S uh, if you want it. <laughs> and I thought it was early to put the Halloween decorations in the dollar stores. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they've got that. I saw a little bit of Christmas stuff in one of them uh, uh, already. Yeah, uh, one it. little section uh, had some of it up there already. Oh, so. So we have uh, upcoming ham radio contests. Yes, we do. Uh, Quite a few things going on next weekend. Uh, First off, we have the First Class CW Operators Club uh, holding their CUSO party, 0 100 to 2359 Zulu, September 9th. It's in all HF bands except the work bands, and the mode is CW. We have the World All Europe DX Contest, SSB. Zero Hours Zulu, September 9th to 2359 Zulu, September 10th. Organized by the Deutsche Amateur Radio Club. This is 3.5, 7, 14, 21, and 28 megahertz in single sideband. We have uh, the uh, Straight Key Century Club Weekend Sprintathon, 1200 Zulu, September 9th to 2359 Zulu, September 10th. It is 160 through 6 meters, excluding the work bands, and that is also CW. The ARRL September VHF Contest, 1800 Zulu, September 9th, 0300 Zulu, September 11th. It's organized by the American Radio Relay League. Bands, all amateur bands, 6 meters and up. All legal modes are permitted, while CW and SSB phone are the most common, MSK-144, FT-8, and FM only are gaining popularity. Other popular modes include PSK-31, FSK-441, and JT-65, so lots of stuff there. Check it out. Yeah, that's a big contest. Uh, there'll be a lot of activity on your uh, on your local uh, uh, VHF bands, and and well, like they said, anything six meters and up. Be nice if six meters opens that oh, yeah, weekend. That'd be nice. Would really help. We have the North American Sprint uh, CW organized by the National Contest Journal, 0 100 to 400 Zulu, September the 10th, 80, 40, and 20 meters only for that one, and it's a CW event. And there's the Four States QRP Group Second Sunday Sprint, zero hours Zulu to zero two hours Zulu, September 11th. It's organized by the Four States, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas QRP Group. Bands 160 to 10 meters, exception of the work bands. Mode CW, SSB, and it's low power QRP stations only. Yep, the QRP stations, uh, that is a designation for uh, low-powered amateur radio stations. And these sprints are very short things. That's why they're called yeah. sprints. They're uh, usually an hour, two hours, something like that. So it's a, it's a quick and uh, easy event to get involved in. And that one being both CW and SSB, uh, whatever your preference, you can give it a shot. That is it for this week. We thank you for tuning in. Uh, check out our Facebook group. We want to thank CKUT for a really nice email yep. we got back from them on an evaluation of our radio program. We posted up the uh, the response we got from them. We thank them for taking the time to review the show and their really nice supportive comments on what we do here with the program. So uh, thanks to the programming committee at CKUT for that. 
We'll be back again next week with 30 more minutes of news and information about radio. Get in touch with us if you have anything you'd like to share with us. And do check out our Facebook, our YouTube channel, and our X channel as well. Have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you again next week on CKUT 90.3 FM here in Montreal. Bye-bye.